me, there were these uh, people who uh, had a, a certain kind of, uh, they called it the Passover cake. And it was a white cake that they kept. And they would get it, uh, be passed to them by the local alchemists and at the apothecary shops and things. And uh, people didn't have doctors then. And uh, they lived uh, to be quite, uh, you know, in their 70s and 80s. And, um, and uh, they swore that it was this cake that kept them everybody healthy. And this cake was pretty much outlawed by Constantine and then completely gone within uh, 50 or 60 years. Uh, alchemy was outlawed. Uh, everybody was thrown into jail. Then, of course, we have the Inquisitions and things. And the Lambus bread, by the way, from uh, that the elves have in uh, Lord of the Rings is the Tolkien's version of, uh, of this cake. And... Um, what this cake was was it, it was the uh, it was the alchemy it was a uh, a kind of alchemy light a philosopher's stone light an easy to make uh, thing that could hold the elixir uh, which would allow us to um, live extended lifetime and uh, that's it was a given uh, in the uh, age before this age uh, 6,500 years ago uh, when everybody lived to be old. But then as this age, at the, as the last age ended and the, this age began, uh, you know, 6,500 years or so ago, uh, we began to uh, roll back our ages, uh, every generation getting a little bit more short-lived. The only reason that we're long-lived now is we were using pharmaceuticals and things to, uh, to keep people alive. And uh, so we've fallen away, and now the... The completion is here in that we have not only derided the greatest and most sacred of all arts uh, and trampled it into the ground and killed uh, everyone who practiced it, but now we are at the very edge of materialism uh, in which every last vestige of alchemical truth is being rooted out and destroyed. First thing Mao did was to destroy the Shaolin and the Taoist communities in China. The first thing that the... Uh, um, that Ho Chi Minh did when he took over uh, Vietnam was destroy all the alchemical uh, Buddhist traditions that were going on there. And it, it, it's, not, it's left or right, it doesn't matter. Uh, uh, both sides are trying to destroy this tradition. Uh, I don't know, it, I, I'm guessing it's the archons that are behind it and uh, with a lot of stupid people following in line. So at the end of this age with the Few people that uh, even care about what alchemy is um, and the internet combined, uh, I think that I can freely now say what it is without uh, being murdered. And uh, I'll, we'll see. Uh, we'll see if I if I win that uh, or not. But uh, uh, right now, I just think it's too important. The ed end of uh, the internet could be at hand. Um, either way, it gets out uh, it, this way is the old, first time in history that the alchemical truth can be released in such a massive fashion that it can never be bottled up. And uh, that's really the goal. I have a DVD coming out in about two months, The Alchemy Code, in which I'm going to go in and really explain what alchemy is with great computer visuals, um, having uh, animated by a, a great animator in Holland. And uh, it's going to be a great uh, film and really, hopefully, you know, act like a, a, a film version of what a Gothic cathedral was, which was also an alchemical vehicle. So... Um, the, the rebirth of alchemy is at hand. Uh, um, it's really exciting, and uh, uh, there's a, there are going to be very few of us, and we're going to we're going to be able to compare notes if they keep the internet going, and we're going to uh, and we're going to discover the elixir, and we're going to freely pass it around. We are not going to sell it. We're going to freely pass it. That's the new rules. The new rules are that you have to give it away. If you're doing it for money then you shouldn't be doing it. Now, I, do, I will be selling elixirs, but not the elixir. I will be freely giving away as much of the information as I can about how to make the elixir over the next year and a half. Uh, we'll see how the uh, powers that be take this. Thank you, Jay. Um, Patrick, do you have a question for Jay? 
Yeah, Jay, first of all, I heard you mention that one could make orm from a gold coin, and the coin wouldn't lose any discernible value. But recently on Lanch's show, you mentioned that commercially available orm could be dangerous. You suggest yes. instead that we should be boiling and concentrating minerals left over from collected dew without having to touch the ground. Can you elaborate on this new version of Mountain Dew? <laughs> Very good. Uh, yeah, you know, and I want to say something about that. Um, um, I'm, I think I was flat wrong when I said that about the uh, Ormus. Um, uh, I, not that it, there isn't interesting qualities in the, uh, in the uh, Ormus, but uh, it is not it. <laughs> That's just it. I was wrong. I mean, any 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 infatuation that I may have had has now been dissipated under the uh, scrutiny of reality. Reality truly does bite, and uh, when it bites, it bites hard. And uh, you know, it is not right. It just is not right. And uh, I've been through this thing, and uh, uh, and I know uh, I don't think that these people are frauds. I just think they're misguided. And I think it's dangerous to take it. it. Has nothing to do with Ormuz at all. And I can say that firmly. Um, alchemy has to do with a with a different version of reality. And that's the problem that we have today: is that science has embedded us in only half of the reality. It's a very well researched half of reality, but it's only half, and science refuses to look at the other half, so, you know, that's that's where alchemy comes in, because science is only interested in that which can be repeated, so they can mix certain chemicals together, and it makes the same formula every time, and then they say, this is science, but alchemy is not looking for the thing that is the same every time alchemy is looking for the singularity for the thing that's different and what it does is it seeks to go into nature and pull out that singularity that that one thing that's a miracle and it's 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 a um it, you know it has different names uh, etherions paul the violet calls them um, they were orgone, orgone fields, according to Wilhelm Reich. Uh, it was, uh, you know, the mana from heaven to the Hebrews. Uh, everybody's got the different names for it. But what it is, is, and, and it's not just do. Do is the best way to do it. But you have to change the way you think, and when you change the way you think, you'll see it, you'll see it everywhere. You know, there's a philosopher, and philosophers, you know, were not just people who talked about their points of view. Philosophers were alchemists, the lovers of Sophia. They were the ones who looked into Sophia uh, and, and loved her. And uh, uh, alchemists and philosophers were synonymous until just a few hundred years ago. And so philosophers, you know, they can, um, they can understand that this is everywhere. And in alchemy... The uh, the maxim is uh, is you know I spent years and years looking for it and I never found it I couldn't see it anywhere and then one day I found it and then I could see it everywhere and that's really the truth and the truth is is that it's everywhere you have to look because you have to change the way that you think and when you change the way you think you'll you'll see that there's many vehicles for Creating this is not just do. There's many vehicles for it. If you live in a high desert region like El Paso, like one of my alchemist friends, well, he has no dew. He's at 5,000 feet. There's no way he can collect dew. There's never any moisture there. But in June and July, he gets tremendous electrical storms, huge storms coming through uh, uh, through the area, dumping tons of water on the ground, and he collects this electrified water, and it's really, really good. Some people can't get that, and they can't get dew either, so they resort to, hmm, how do I call it, golden water, we'll call it. It's water that is of a golden color that hasn't touched the ground, and I'm not going to go into that any further, I think you can get the idea. 
And uh, so there's a lot of ways to do it. Mistletoe, um, things that don't grow in the ground, like uh, the ayahuasca vine. Uh, any, any of these things um, has a large amount of this positive etheric charge. Science is only interested in gravitas. And, alchem- and, and you could, could say that alchemy is only interested in levitas, but it isn't true. We're interested in gravitas, too. We're, we know that it takes two to tango, and uh, so we know that we need the, the grounding force of the earth. Uh, it's, it's still sacred, uh, but we understand the etheric force. We can capture it. We can distill it, coagulate it, sublimate it, and then drink it, and um, uh, the results are spectacular. Wow. Well, I'm interested in the not touching the ground thing. I wonder if most methods of boiling would cause grounding like a pan on a stove burner would. And short of dangling a pot over a a wood tripod over a fire, do you think that it would work on a glass top stove acting as an insulator from ground? Yeah, if you have a thick uh, glass, which you can buy at any medical supply company on the Internet, um, you can buy all the equipment you need for about uh, oh two hundred dollars. Um, you can get one of these really cool um, electric plates, which are ceramic. Um, you can get, uh, um, but it's still even if you had a, a steel, a, a metal electric plate. If you had a, you know, a good quarter inch of glass between, you're not going to get any charge for that glass. Glass is a great, uh, gr- a great protector uh, uh, from from the uh, ground. And you know, there's a lot of other things. Wood. Alchemists used many things to uh, boil it, but you have so many uh, things available today because of the Kali Yuga that, you know, you can use them. And uh, alchemists would have given their left leg to uh, had a, a, a electric burner that they could adjust, for instance, because they had to keep the flame at a very low, um, a very low uh, power uh, you know, by by themselves, and that was really hard, especially to keep it constant. But with electrical flow and and hot plates and things, uh, you can uh, you can do it, and um, and it's not that hard. You know, uh, the word uh, the word do is a uh, uh, is a is a Latin for ras, uh, which is uh, from the Sanskrit word rasiana. Which is a Sanskrit word, which means uh, the dew or the magic dew. Or it's also the tra- uh, 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 sap of trees, which also are very high in this particle of the way up in the high branches. And um, and this is the center of, of Indian alchemy, uh, Aryan in Indian alchemy for thousands of years. And so this is where Rosicrucian comes from. Rosicrucian is Ras, which is do, and cross or crotion, which is your, your, your alembic or your, your pot or your vase or your, your vessel or your container. And so once you understand this, and, and, you, and you use the four elements, for instance, the do is the air, and when you split the do, you split it into the earth and into the, into the water. And you use fire to split the dew. 